Starts of the week on today's episode and the Boom Boom Kicker. Lots of matchups we are going through. Make sure that you subscribe. Stick with us through the rest of the week, through the rest of the season, and let's get those hashtag Foot Clan titles. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Hey, it's football time. You got the right sport this time. Very nice. Let's go, Stephon Diggs. Welcome in, one and all, Thursday episode of the show. Where are my mallards at? <laughs> <laughs> How's Deucer's Alley doing? We have uh, Papa Josh in the building today with Judge Giamatti Al Borland. Doing swell. Uh, Papa doing Josh. Well, Papa um, Josh spent a good part of his morning bragging about the fact that he wears medium shirts. Yeah, mm. that's true. And not I, largest. Because we tried to give him a large shirt, and he's like, mm, I wear mediums. And then he flexed for so long. Fun, oh. fun fact. You can wear any size T-shirt you want. Incorrect, brother. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Incorrect. All right. I guarantee we can get a medium on you just like Papa Josh gets a medium on. Should uh, we do that? Let, that's a fun science experiment. <laughs> just And no, we should like, not do that. Like the Ublek? <laughs> it's like just because you wear a medium doesn't mean that. Like if you go to a tailor and you're like, I wear a medium. And they're like, okay, but you should not. I did tell him, I said, just because you used to wear mediums doesn't mean you have to keep wearing mediums. And then he proceeded, his rebuttal was flexing in all sorts of ways. Like, I'm pretty sure I could get my child's t shirt on. It doesn't mean I should wear it. Yeah, okay. but to be fair to Papa Josh. Yeah. If I if I was, you know, he see he works out if yeah, I, yeah, sure. I'd wear mediums too. He's yeah, and he's yeah. like, what, four foot five? <laughs> uh, all don't, right. don't think you could get on this show. And flex, and you're not going to get dunked on. Welcome in, one and all. So much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you old bald turd. Yeah, we got yeah. it. Yeah. Just to eat what? it. So shiny. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> NFL news matchup preview starts of the week. Boom, boom, kicker. We didn't have time to talk about Josh, that's for sure. Uh, before we jump into the news. <clears throat> Uh, Papa Josh does run the Fantasy Footballers Discord channel, which you can find at ballersdiscord.com and uh, hang out with a ton. <laughs> now there's just... <laughs> I'm sorry. There, there are pictures of people in medium shirts See, they're wearing mediums. that should not be that are coming through our Slack channel right now. Shame on you. We got work to do. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Let's talk Dolphins. Tyreek Hill, Raheem Moster did not practice on Wednesday. Tyreek Hill, it was a hip injury. Moster at the ankle. Generally, this team has given some veteran days off, but the, these seem a little bit worth paying attention to. We're, we're getting deeper into the season where you completely understand the veteran day of rest, um, but it is news because they have not yet done this. Like Mostert, who you would be like, oh, yeah, you should he should never practice on a Wednesday. You, you can make that argument, but he has been. Uh, you look back at the, the last couple of injury reports, so you got to pay attention here. There's, uh, I think there's actually quite a few missed practices I'm slightly worried about because it's like the first time. Are you year. worried about Tyreek? Um, I I don't know. Any Today's a insight. big day. Yeah, I mean it's it's all about today. I don't have any insight on the actual injury, so I'm only worried because losing Tyreek would be you know a devastating loss for fantasy. Yeah, and uh, that would translate to the whole offense. I mean, it may it it would affect Tua in huge ways. Yeah, I would. We got to get him more information. But if I had Tyreek on my team, I would at least I'd be making sure I have a backup plan. Kyler Murray, Cardinals quarterback. 
return to a full practice on Wednesday. Mike, you okay. have another tidbit to yeah, share. Yeah, uh, we found a report that he has been practicing without a brace, which has been the plan, and the plan is to play without a brace, which is – I mean, that's, that's fantastic. When you're talking about a mobile quarterback, I mean, just putting a brace on the player, there's a whole bunch of mental stuff of like, well, maybe you don't fully trust your knee. You're still concerned about it, which is understandable to have a, a devastating injury that you've been in rehab essentially for almost a year. And if he's – and when they're playing with a knee brace on, they just – they you physically can't move the way that you can without a knee brace on. So this is – Pretty exciting stuff. It doesn't the the article talked about they're not gonna speculate and say that Kyler's gonna play this week. It's not an impossible thing. I do not expect him to play this week. Uh but next week it would then jump up to a higher probability and the week after that, that's to me that's a lock. Well, that is a lock with the twenty one day window. That's when I expect like th for sure he's back by then. It's a tough couple of matchups this week and next week, but it's, it's great news because it's good in just the, the confidence of where he's at right now. Yeah. The fact that he's practicing without the brace now says he's confident in the surgery. Aaron Jones, DNP. Matt LaFleur said he's a bit sore to be expected, ramping him up, hopefully. Man. We'll talk about that game today. Brock Purdy, this is huge news. He has entered the league's concussion protocol. Sam Darnold expected to start on Sunday against Cincinnati. Yeah, I mean, if you're in a two QB league, you hopefully already paid attention to this news as it as it broke last night and picked up Donald today in waivers. If he is out there, uh, uh, you know, could be a worthy start. You you've got a lot of arguments about how much is the system, how much is it Brock Purdy, uh, but the line has moved uh, two points in the favor of the towards the Cincinnati Bengals. So the the start will be Brock Purdy this or uh, will be Sam Donald this week. Jalen Hurts not listed on the injury report, so any speculation about his knee, you know, nothing significant. Chargers, Eckler, full participant on Wednesday. All right, we so love that. That's a good sign. And then, which yeah, and did you guys follow all the the Eckler stuff? Like mm. there was some comments after the game that made it seem like Eckler is pretty frustrated with the workload with his coach. Oh, really? Uh, and then. You know, he kind of had a, a follow-up, but the, the follow-up was – it was that of a fiery man. So which, Interesting. Which Eckler is – That's a man who needs a <laughs> – who doesn't have a contract for next year. He doesn't. And it's just – it's nice. Eckler – Eckler cares about his stats. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll just, like he, he likes fantasy football. Obviously, he's going to want to win his football game, but he is a man who cares that he's on the field and he's producing and helping his team. I think we should call – NFL players that care about their stats, businessmen. Because <laughs> yeah. that's really what they are. I mean, it's a business. You can't say that And when teams treat it like a business and then the players look, you have to – what else do you have to bring to the table? Like exactly. The you slide the stats across the table as your resume for that contract. Look at my intangibles, coach. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> look at this heart. <laughs> You're like, so the thing we can't measure – yeah, that's the thing. Please pay me. We've all seen the videos of like the the backroom, you know, agent and or GM talking, and they're they are throwing out the stats. They're yes. like, this is a guy who had 750 yards last year at the tight end position. You need him, and it's like, oh, you're right. And then they sign him. <laughs> so Bus yeah. be be businessmen players. <laughs> yeah, they are they are businessmen. Uh, Gerald Everett, Josh Palmer, mm -hmm. DNPs on Wednesday. Okay. After what Josh Palmer did this past week, was not happy to see that he did not practice on Wednesday. Is he in that group of people you're worried about, Jason? Yeah. He's, he's a he, Sunday night game. That's he, a significant issue, and it could be a huge opportunity. <laughs> oh, man. There is a lot of <laughs> <It> huge <laughs> opportunity that's already <laughs> happened and not come to fruition. Um, like all Wednesday practice reports, you got to pay much more attention to Thursday. It could be a day of rest, but... Palmer doesn't strike me as someone that would usually get that kind of treatment, uh, especially since he's kind of in a newer role for him in the offense. D DK Metcalf, uh, full practice. And he he did come out and say he's expected to play. Lockett, mm. Kenneth Walker, yeah, both full DMPs. I know that Zach Charbonnet 
was limited. Yeah, he's been hurt for a few weeks. But uh, he did practice in a limited fashion, and, and Walker did not. Right. You definitely need to make sure you check on Charbonnet's availability on your waivers. He is someone that has been rostered the majority of the season, but the last few weeks while he's not been practicing, he's hit plenty of waivers. Um, this is Kenneth Walker last week, did practice on Wednesday. Lockett last week. Um, Lockett had a weird practice week where he like didn't practice on Friday or something. Um, so it's just a situation to monitor. Be prepared with Charbonnet. Thursday night football, Baker and Chris Godwin will play against the Bear, uh, the Bills tonight. Dawson Knox likely to be placed on IR, which would be a prolonged absence. And Dalton Kincaid will have a, a shot to be mm -hmm. heavily involved. And David Montgomery will not practice on Thursday. They do play on Monday night, but the bye week is next week. Jason's already shaking his head. He knows the game plan. I know the game plan. The game plan is that he does not play. The thing I hate the most about it is – please, please just rule him out early. Because it's the Monday night game, I'm worried that I'm not going to be able to, you know, before the Sunday games happen, put him on IR and pick up someone in his place. It's just unfortunate. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Well, Brooksy, it's going to be a long show. We don't have any bye weeks this week. We've got a lot of matchups to talk through. This week, staying on brand for the NFL this year, zero games over the 46.5-point total, which is kind of wild. Right. However, yeah. 10 of 16 games are between 43.5 and 46.5. And so, so no super low. Yeah, it's not a, not a putrid week. The Rams, 3-4, and four, take on the 4-2 and two Dallas Cowboys. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Dallas minus six. The over-under here, 45 and a half. We've still, I mean, when you look at Dak Prescott and Matthew Stafford from a fantasy perspective, you have had very few opportunities to start these players and be happy with it. Mm -hmm. um, you did get a really good week from Dak before the bye. Stafford, we keep thinking that these prolific Cooper Cup and Puka numbers and 2-2 performances. And his performances. You, we keep thinking that they will equate to something in the fantasy realm. Uh, I do not think that this week. I mean, facing Dallas on the road with no history of being able to put multi-touchdown games together, he is uh, very much out of my streaming consideration. Is it? Is that oh, I'm in agreement unanimous? There. Yeah, that's fair. Not against this defense. Uh, Dallas is currently the sixth seed right now. The Rams, they're still in the fight. Daryl Henderson. Uh, some people were uh, thinking we omitted the news that he had been reverted to the practice squad. Um, a player is uh, able to be activated from the practice squad three times, and then after the fourth time, they, they have to be on the, the active roster. So we expect activation and, uh, what, uh, decent performance. Yeah, this is just normal uh, business transactions to maximize your roster construction because he came off the practice squad. NFL rules allow him to go back there a couple weeks where other teams cannot claim him off of the practice squad. So it's just a smart transaction. Do you guys feel like he's going to get s more snaps? I mean, I, I know he got 18 carries, which was – that was, you know, that's very solid for a game basically off the street. It was 60% of the running back attempts for the Rams. But we only saw two targets. Uh, like, what is your confidence just playing Daryl Henderson as that running back two or a flex type of play a against a, a Dallas Cowboys team that is currently 10th in schedule adjusted points to the running back? I'm, I'm still okay playing Daryl Henderson because there's, you know, the running backs are hard to come by right now, and while it's not a great matchup, I do think he will continue to get the 60-40 split. His, he got only two targets, but he got all of the targets um, out of the running back room. So uh, he is involved in, in all phases of the game. Okay. Yeah, and we saw, we saw James Conner have a big week against Dallas. It's not impossible. Royce Freeman last week, 12 for 66. To answer your question, I think the split you saw last week is what I would expect this week. Okay. On the other side, you know, you, you went from a, a fast pace of play offense in Dallas last year along with efficiency to now the dead last in neutral situation pace of play. It has really cut the legs out of, 
you know, Pollard and, and, and Lamb and, and even the Cooks Gallup situation. And, you know, Jake Ferguson has been not what we hoped. So, and Dak, obviously. So, in this, in this matchup in particular, you know, the Rams defense has been pretty good this year. Mm hmm. Um, you know, they, they seem to have drives or, you know, defensive opportunities that they take advantage of and then they disappear for a, for a drive. You know, what are you doing? You know, Lamb is going to be in your lineup. Pollard is going to be in your lineup. Although I have gotten a lot of messages about, do I swap Pollard for this guy? Do I swap Pollard for that guy? Like, I feel like people want out of Pollard for some reason. I, I actually think it's fair. Um, Pollard has been okay. But he's been a disappointment for what you thought you had when in week one he was a top five running back, scored more than 20 fantasy points, looked like, wow, he's going to be great. You know, you, you look at the last several weeks um, before the bye, and he had a couple of stinkers with an average game. He's he's still on a solid offense. He's still receiving the lion's share of the work, and he's still talented. So this is a player you're going to start you? every week. You're going to want him. But, you know, we brought up, um, a couple weeks ago, there was like the Pollard Bijan trade, and obviously Bijan uh got the got sick this last week. But I I'm still firmly more on. I think there are higher upside players. Like if I could turn Pollard into a Austin Eckler who's been struggling, or Bijan from you a would bat, do that. I would do. You that, would do yeah. it for Eckler. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, Mike. Mike, are you in that camp? <sighs> That's I wouldn't do that. That's a very tough really? call. You no, would I, rather have Pollard than Pollard, Eckler. Yeah, Pollard's been good, and, yeah. and this is an, an offense that I trust. I mean, we're talking about the Chargers at 2-4 and four being, you know, you could have a head coaching change. You've got an ankle injury with Eckler. You you don't have Mike Williams. Or they have not been able to put up big numbers, and, and Pollard's still been pretty darn good, and you're getting a lot of snaps. Now, Saquon. I mean, Pollard, the last three weeks, was 14 points, 6 points, and 7 points. Yeah. 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 Against yeah the, what was Eckler? Okay. Well, <laughs> Eckler, was, Eckler was coming off of a high ankle sprain where you expect a couple of down weeks. I'm just, I, I, that just blows my mind. Like, it's so easy. I'm, I'm like, uh, it's not close to me. If we were doing a, you know, a, a, the redraft today, I can't fathom that we would be drafting Pollard ahead of Eckler, but I mean, it, it, it's a decision that everyone has to make on their own. I've just, I would firmly be on the the Eckler side. Yeah, I'm on the the better team side of that one. Uh, CD Lamb, you know, you just keep riding them. But Brandon yeah. Cooks, Michael Gallup, you know, that's I don't want to start those players. It doesn't mean you can't get a performance out of them. It just means I, I don't, I don't have confidence. Yeah, I I get it. Um, and, but Dak, Dak and Ferguson are both very interesting to me. You have the Rams 21st against fantasy quarterbacks and 30th. I mean, that is juicy. There was, there was a reason Jason wanted to have, uh, was hoping that the Muth would get Luth this past week, which kind of seemed like he was going to, and then it was, no, he's not, he is in fact still hurt. But the reason is that the Rams are the team that we target with, with the tight end position. Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, play yep. them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, the matchup's not outstanding, but they're both going to be fine. And then you know, I think you end sit the conversation two, two. there. Yeah, I sit two two. All right, Minnesota's three and four. The Packers are two and four. Games in Lambo, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Minnesota minus one on the road. Wow. The over unders forty two points. Green Bay has lost three straight games, including a matchup with Denver last week. Minnesota, the other end of the spectrum. They have two uh, two game winning streak. Beat San Francisco. It's a lower over under. You know, Jordan Love, the team says they haven't lost an ounce of confidence in Jordan Love. I, I have I haven't gained an ounce of confidence in Jordan Love over the last few weeks. Yeah, he he just, you know, we we talked about it all season long while he was being really solid for fantasy, which surprisingly four of his six games, he's been a top twelve quarterback. <laughs> it's so wild. He hasn't looked the part. You know, when you when you just watch the games, um, he's, he misses a lot of throws, you know, deep down the field where it's like, it's good read. It's it's he's got a guy, but he's just missing him too often for me to have confidence to start him. Yeah, it's been it's been a little bit rough. I mean, he's on pace to run for about 400 yards on the ground that helps lift the, the floor, but only a 58 percent completion. Yeah, right and now. he also has the biggest A dot of any quarterback. I mean, yeah, we like that. 
So, I mean, you you are going to – it's going to cost you a little bit, I think, when you when you take those shots. Sure. But, but Jason's right. I mean, he's missing uh, as well. And, you know, that, that says a lot about Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs and uh, Jaden Reed and, and Musgrave where – where are you sitting this week at home against Minnesota with those guys? Christian Watson back at a full practice, but you know, last week shows you the extremes, right? Three for 27 didn't score and hurt you if you started him. Yeah. Between them, Romeo Dobbs is one of the stranger fantasy seasons that we have going on right now. Cause he's been a top 24 fantasy wide receiver in four of six weeks. Like, if you have if you've just been playing Romeo Dobbs as a flex option, more often than not, you're getting good performances. Now it's pretty heavy on the touchdown side, but he just keeps coming through. Are you guys in the matchup against Minnesota? Twenty second against wide receivers when you adjust for schedule. It's I mean, it's it's not a bad matchup. It's not a bad matchup, but I, I would order them like Christian Watson is is the one so far. If you look at the last three weeks, the last two games played with their bye week in there, um, that's where Christian Watson has been back playing like 80-plus percent of snaps. So you've got Christian Watson, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, and Jaden Reed all on the field, and it has been the target leader has been Christian Watson. And I also think he's the most talented, uh, certainly most talented athlete, but for fantasy purposes, what he can do is better than the other two guys. So the combination of him... You know, he's got a 20% market share during that time. Romeo Dobbs has a 15% market share. You're saying over the last two weeks? Over the last two games where Christian Watson's been back uh, to, to pretty much a full game. And Jaden Reed has had a 10% target market share. It concerns share. me that since Watson's been back, you have 34 receiving yards for Romeo Dobbs. And that's two games combined. You also have more receptions for Jaden Reed in that span. So it is a little concerning. It's, it's, I would, I'm benching weird. Dobbs if I, if I can't. Okay. I'd play Rashi Rice. Yeah, that's you know, fair. I'd 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 play Wandale. Okay. That, yeah, I mean, I think think Wandale and and Dobbs are about the the same tier. I would rather play KJ Osborne on the other side of this same game. Sure. Obviously, Jordan Addison should be in everyone's lineup at this point. Yeah, he has uh, number two in touchdowns this year. Six touchdowns for Jordan Addison. Yeah, he's having a great year. You re really? You'd go KJ Osborne? I would, yeah. I mean, Osborne, his his best finish was week three. And in the two games with, like, uh, we've had two full games without Jefferson. Am I correct in that? Uh, maybe. I mean, he's I on the field all the time. And, yeah, he, and he's no, got nine receptions in two weeks. I mean, I, I lean that way because of how one offense is going one trajectory with another weapon right. and another offense is, is moving in the positive direction. That's fair. But what do you do with Madison and Akers? I think a lot Oof, of people are asking man. that question. They added Akers off of waiver wires. He played the most snaps he's played last week. Jason, you said he looked good. He did. He looked good um, in the receiving game. I, I, I know he was slightly less uh, efficient on a total yards per carry than Madison, but I, I thought when I was watching, he looked just as good, if not better. Um, I think both players are like I would. I would put Madison ahead of Akers. I would be willing to start Madison in a plus matchup. The Packers haven't stopped the run very well. But I think Akers is like a sneaky, nasty, you know, thank you, Mike, uh, player that is startable this week, and you could end up with a decent game. You know, another player that did not practice was TJ Hawkinson yesterday. He went down a couple of times in that game. One time uh, was a little different than the other one. It... At least on the, the when I was listening to the broadcast, they were saying they went back and said no. We we saw him kind of limping uh, after the play, so it wasn't just a yeah. full. It wasn't a full. We got to stop the clock. Somebody go down. It was you're you're hurt. Just go down, man. What are you doing? It was so funny to have the the camera catch uh, the the head coach Kevin O'Connell telling him like just screaming at his player Hawkinson go down. It's like oh my gosh, what's the NFL gonna do? But then you realize like. He saw Hawkinson hurt, yeah, and he was protecting Hawkinson, so it wasn't really. That and that wasn't even the injury that he ended up suffering. I mean, right. later in the game, uh, you had a player kind of crunch down on the foot. Uh, he did leave the field. He came back. Those are those are tough situations because you don't know how bad that injury is when you're running on adrenaline in the back of a game, 
I hope the foot's okay because he's been so productive. Yeah, yeah. this is a this PPR is, machine. Right this now. This is one of those situations where you're just you're not even. Uh, if I am the TJ Hawkinson manager, there's four or five guys out on waivers that are all equal tight end plays. I'm just leaving my roster with TJ Hawkinson there and monitoring the practice reports. And should it look bad, then Sunday morning I will make the transaction I need to make to pick up a, a Logan Thomas, yeah, Trey McBride, exactly group. Yeah. Uh, Kirk Cousins, top 10 quarterback in five of seven starts. You playing him on the road in this one? Uh, I'm not opposed to it. I'm not really, really excited to play it. But, I mean, let's be honest. Are you ever really excited to play Kirk Cousins? I'm not opposed to being excited. <laughs> really? Okay. Okay. Is okay. That... I'm kind of opposed to being excited in this matchup. Top 10 in five of seven starts. It's, He's been great. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't normally have a good time in Green Bay. So, I'm more opposed to being excited than I was a minute ago. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I I just thought about it and I've changed my mind. I I I'm not opposed to being surprised. <laughs> there we go. Oh, right. yeah, okay. I'm the not time. opposed. I'm I, I, I'm pleasantly surprised. That's such good advice by us. Uh all right, <laughs> quick break back with some more matchups. Let me give you a follow-up asking for a friend. To the Minnesota discussion to, to the a moment Kirk ago? Cousins, yes. Okay. Kirk Cousins against Green Bay on the road or Joseph Burrow on the road against the San Francisco 49ers? I got mine. I know my answer. I will I will go Joe. I will as well. Oh, man. Which is another way of saying I will go Jamar. Oh, Brook, Brooks, he's going Cousins. Look at this guy. Yeah. Look at this guy. All right. They're okay. saying T. Higgins is looking good at practice, that he's um, back to full strength. The uh, T. Higgins, Joe Burrow. I mean, Kirk Cousins had a good game last week, right? Yeah, because Kirk Cousins is playing great, and Joe Burrow is not. But who did he play last week? The San Francisco 49ers. So I think Joe Burrow can do it too. What happens if Darnold dominates? <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yes, oh, yes, uh, please do it. Please go out there and throw 303 and look perfect. Atlanta, let's talk about this game. Four and three taking on the two and four Tennessee Titans. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Atlanta minus two and a half. The over-under is 35 and a half. Yeah, banana rama. That is the lowest of the year. We're going to be seeing Desmond Ritter against some combination of Will Levis and Malik Willis. Uh, this is also Arthur Smith was the oh, coordinator for Mike Vrabel, so you Freaking have turd burglar. Yeah, I I almost wrote this this morning, but I saved it for the show because Mike, you were kind of in some Twitter exchanges about Arthur Smith, and then everybody wants to throw the record in our yep. in the face of uh, those that criticize his usage of Bijan or Pitts or Drake London, and um, it presumes that because he's four and three, he couldn't be five and two or six and one or seven and zero oh with better decision making. I understand his job is not to cater to fantasy football yeah. players. And he should not. No. However, I do believe after watching enough of Arthur Smith spit in the faces of fantasy players in press conferences, and there'd be no way to prove this, but I genuinely believe this could be the first coach in the history of this show and fantasy football that might overtly make a poor decision <laughs> to... Stick it to a fantasy player. I there was, is a chance that on the goal line, when he knows it should be Bijan, something in the back of his mustached mind mm. says, I'm going to put Cordero in there and the fantasy players can eat my butt. I was like, I, I held it back because we needed to move the show forward. But when, when we were talking Pollard Bijan, I was going to bring up what had happened today and be like, are you sh like, are you confident in Arthur Smith that, he wouldn't do something like that because I have come to, like I'm getting to the same conclusion that he will make decisions because he's so angry at fantasy football. Yeah, I mean, I'm not the head coach of the Falcons. I don't know what happens on the practice field every no. day. I, you know, he he defended Desmond Ritter with the film study of look, you know, it's group think that he stinks and if you watch the film, you know he doesn't. Which we gave Ritter the full credit. He had a great game. He did have a great game. Game. And before that, he has looked pretty terrible. But the – my – because he brought – he said the phrase hot hand, which 
If you're a coach and you truly find a, a player who gets hot because that does happen, good. Fire away. Let that player dominate. 21 for 59? Cold hand. Is not a hot hand. That is a that is that is a hand that is so cold that it burns people. This is this is where I was so angry last week at Tyler Algier's usage that he's act actively hurting the team. Um, I am still of the belief that while while I do not trust Arthur Smith, talent wins out. Bijan Robinson is not going to end the season with fewer touches, fewer carries. Are you making the Kyle Pitts argument right now? Yeah, I think I heard Kyle <laughs> Pitts in there. Well, Kyle Pitts, to be fair, he hasn't looked like himself physically. He's been good the last two weeks, getting healthier. But talking about last year. It was sure. And the year before. Well, the year before, he, he had, had a 1,000 yards. yards as a rookie. Um, I, I, it wasn't a good fantasy output, though. Yeah, correct, because he didn't get the <laughs> touchdowns. And and maybe that's what happens around the goal line for Bijan, but I still am a full 100% believer that Bijan is going to have an excellent, wonderful – uh, I, I like. I have. I have no skepticism over his fantasy football output the rest of the year, oh. including. I'm not saying he's a top three running back the rest of the year, but he's going to be great most weeks I think for that, fantasy football. I think it. I have massive skepticism. Of course, I do. I wish you had him in in our league then, because if the if the if the manager in my league had Bijan and had massive skepticism. I would be offering you, you, trades. It's just it's to me it's just unrealistic to say that you you have to have question marks about a head coach who relentlessly plays other options all the time. Uh it, it's going to hurt you. There's Bijan no Ro question that Bijan's talent doesn't win out if he's on the bench. Bijan Robinson has had two games this season where he's not a top 24 running back. One of them was this last that's, that's week That's not where the he standard by which I am I'm I'm grading him. I, top 24 is not the grade for Bijan. Bijan Robinson, if you take this last week out where he was clearly not involved at all, he had one touch and was sick, and the NFL is investigating what happened. If you take that out, yeah, he's he's unfortunately not getting goal line opportunities, but he's been very good for fantasy. I, I feel like we're, we're overreacting to him not being a top three guy. He's been really really good he's averaging 13.7 fantasy points per game yeah that's fine it's not what you drafted him to be he hasn't scored a touchdown on the ground in seven weeks you this is the 29th ranked offense in football with a head coach that defends it if you don't have any doubt about that that it blows my mind i'm not saying he's not super talented put him on the lions and he'd be the number one fantasy running back it has nothing to do with his talent has everything to do with Cordero Patterson, Tyler, Tyler Algier, and Arthur Smith, who wants to win. They are 29th in points per game. My, my point here, Andy, is like <laughs> the 13.7 fantasy points per game that, 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 that Bijan is averaging, where you're saying you don't have skepticism, that is more than what Tony Pollard is averaging this year. And that's without any of these touchdowns. So I, 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 that's where I, I just have confidence. I don't think he's going to end the year with zero rushing touchdowns. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd like a – Top five performance for a guy drafted to be top five. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd he, be cool. He is certainly not coming through on the top five drafted running back hopes. That part is one hundred percent true. But I I don't want to swing it so far where we think he is not a really important asset. I agree in with fantasy that. football. It sounds like I, you I could totally trade him that. to some people like Jason in your league if you don't believe he can be a top five guy because they believe that he can be. You just. You have to get such a haul, though. Like I, I don't know what what players I'm real confident that I would trade Bijan for. Because I'm Saquon I'm, Barkley. Would you rather have Bijan or Saquon? Saquon. Okay, so that's a flip from draft season. Sure. So Tennessee, Atlanta. We're talking about Bijan a lot because there's not a lot to talk about in this matchup. <laughs> You're not playing quarterbacks. You're not playing wide receivers, except for maybe Drake no, London. You can play Drake London. Tennessee is 26th adjusted. They're giving up 32 points to the wide receiver position. And, and then, you know, Hopkins is dependent on Levis and Willis, so I'd try to bench him. And, I would not play Hopkins. Um, Derrick Henry, you play him. Bijan, he should be back out there. And uh, Kyle Pitts, you know, as long as you understand that playing Johnny Smith is the exact same equation as playing Kyler, uh, Kyler, as playing Kyle Pitts, 
I mean, it is exactly the same. You have the exact same odds. I mean, John Smith's been a top five tight end two times in four weeks. Yeah, John, John Smith's running the normal tight end routes while Kyle Pitts runs deep wide receiver routes that aren't coming through more often than not. Yeah, it, it, it's just been um, – Man, this, this, I, did you guys realize how the snaps have been way down for Pitts? The last three weeks, 53%. 55%. I'm not going to hit it because that's not nice. I mean, that was those were the weeks he came through. You know, he had the the good game against Houston and Washington, but down to 52% against Tampa Bay. For me, yeah. it's Bijan, Derrick Henry, Drake London in this matchup. And then, and and then out. I, I, I don't want to play. Johnny else. Smith averaging more fantasy points per game than Kyle Pitts this year. So, <laughs> yeah. good. It's, it's There's good. a lot of people that don't let Pitts go off their bench that would obviously not even roster Johnny Smith. And that's the kind of like weird yeah, contrast yeah. that I think is funny. Uh, New Orleans is three and four. The Colts are three and four. Uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line: New Orleans minus one. The over/under is forty-three and a half. This game's funny to me because Derek Carr and Gardner Minshew are not elite quarterbacks, but both of them are throwing the ball a lot. I mean, the last two games, Derek Carr has thrown the football so many times. I think he's averaging fifty-two and a half passing yeah. attempts. <laughs> yeah, he is. I mean, he's fifty and fifty-five. So what? what? Who's like, this is a good idea? Like, this is setting up to be one Derek of those. Carr. <laughs> I mean, this could be a game that's just like the Cleveland game last week. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, you want to target Indianapolis Colts games this year with what their team has been doing, their pace of play. Uh, they, they are smashing the over. Five of seven games have hit the over. You, you want to keep targeting Colts games. Pittman, you know, the ride has been bumpy, but then the end of the game, you're pretty happy. Olave. He was super squeaky wheel. Too, if you Pittman? want. Pittman? Yeah. He, oh, it makes sense. He was invisible for the first three and a half quarters. Yeah, he was. He talked about the targets, and then he, he kind of flared up. Oh, he's being a business, businessman? Yeah, he was being a businessman. And then he also doesn't have a contract for next he, year. He did flip. Yes, yeah, that's a great point. He did flip it into trying to be like, man, I've, I'm, you know, I've, I've never been a good loser, but there was squeak, squeak. If you don't get what you expect target wise and you lose, that is just obvious. I would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, I want to contribute to us winning. You didn't even give me the chance to help us win, and we lost. Derek Carr was a streamer candidate because of this matchup. Colts defense, 23rd against quarterbacks, uh, schedule adjusted. And then Zach Moss, he didn't practice on Wednesday. You can have confidence in Kamara and Taylor, right? Yes. I think so, yeah. Taylor should be in your lineup. Tough matchup against the Saints, but he's he's a superstar. And he's getting targets. And what are you guys doing with Josh Downs? playing him i think so i think he's a I, must start in ppr to me in full ppr i would agree he's he's getting a lot of targets from Minshew, and you you stay in the flames last three games he would be on pace for almost 1400 receiving yards 90 receptions 11 touchdowns that part is uh not going to stay the same but right um yeah i think jason's right i think you just stay in the flames for the uh just a quick note for on Taysom hill because i know jason likes him this week do pay attention to Jawan Johnson. He's back. Jawan Johnson has been missing time, and that has looked like it has had direct correlation with Taysom Hill playing more as a traditional tight end, actually catching passes. And if Jawan Johnson is back to full health and playing, that could be – it could take away from Hill's opportunity there. Yeah, that it, it's worth pointing out. If Jawan Johnson is back, Taysom Hill is maybe a, a, a less good start, but – you, Jawan's missed the last month, and there was a change in how they used Taysom yeah, Hill yeah. the last two weeks. You want to know something crazy? Taysom Hill scored 14.8 fantasy points last week. He had a rushing touchdown, right? No, yep. he did. He okay. did. So 14.8 fantasy points in the week of the, uh, the, the tight end day. Yes, national tight end day. Do you want to know what 14.8 fantasy points was last year at the tight end position? Or last week? Oh, there were so many tight ends went off. What was it? 16th. What? That's never happened ever. <laughs> Why don't they do national oh, the, tight end? Unless week that's every wrong. Week? Unless he's categorized differently. Maybe he's categorized as, as a, a quarterback. I think he's. Maybe that's what he, our site is doing. Okay. That, that doesn't seem possible. No, yeah. that's impossible. No, it would have been that would have been tight end four because he's, okay. he's Thank listed. For that. Whew, he's listed whew. as a quarterback. Okay. Okay. But that's still. I mean, to be <laughs> to be quarterback sixteen. Right. Not <laughs> playing quarterback. That's that's pretty good. All right. Well, that makes way more sense. Uh, Olave playing Michael Thomas or Josh Downs? Josh Downs. 
Okay. I, I have that was both pretty those guys that was on my good. League of okay. Record team, and I'm playing Josh Downs over the, I mean, the Yeah, young, talented rookie that's shown explosiveness, old, middling 42 yards a game. Thomas? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You could play Michael Thomas. He's not someone you have to bench here. It's a good matchup for him, but uh, the upside is more on downside. Gardner Minshew, number one in turnover, turnover I heard it. worthy yeah. plays. Upside the down. upside is more on downside? Yeah, the, yeah. yeah upside the upside down. is more on the down on downside. That's It's just hey. how the sentence works. Okay. Shall we move on? Yep. yep. New England's 2-5 and five, taking on the Mi- Miami Dolphins. <laughs> Miami's 5-2. and two. Palindrome. The DraftKings nice. sportsbook line is Miami minus 9.5. The over-under is 46.5. Oh, man. Andy's almost upset of the week. <laughs> oh, you've done it again. You've done it again. You've picked the wildest one to pick. I mean, how do you possibly pick these? Ins- I, your hit rate is not I missed just, one this year. Yes, I've you've missed one. You've but missed t- one. Tannehill injury, I'm still no, no, like no, an no. asterisk. It, like, it was going well for your almost upset until the Tannehill injury. But it's it's a wild combination of not only have you been hitting all your almost upsets, but they're in the craziest ones that you just go, no, no, that's not going to happen. Nine and a half is ridiculous. New England might win the game. Miami, we don't know what these injuries. They might get blown out, too. They might get blown out, yeah. <laughs> that's true. New England Patriots defeated Buffalo last week. Got some things together on offense. Miami went down again to a uh, you know a, a team that was it was supposed to be a, a battle. Really wasn't. They got handled pretty well, mm-hmm. and um, I don't know. This just feels like a big trap game for Miami in this division to me. And you know the fact that Tyreek Hill and Raheem Mostert are showing up in injury reports compounds that. Obviously, those have not. You know, is this line still nine and a half? I will check I assume it, right now. it is. It hasn't moved due to injuries. Yeah. I mean, if if you get further Tyreek information, the line will move. So uh, I just have some worries here. And if Tyreek is banged up, Waddle's been banged up. It is nine. The line has moved to nine. Mm, they heard the show just now. <laughs> Would you still be almost upset? Uh, nine versus nine and a half? Yeah, yeah. Come on, chicken. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still an almost upset. The over under is forty six and a half. Uh, that puts it at twenty eight eighteen Miami. I just don't see that. I mean, Miami, if they, I guess if they hit the turbo button, if they plug the game shark in, they'll do their thing and they'll dominate New England. But I, my part of it is also the Patriots have scored. Did you say they're implied is eighteen? Yep. The Patriots have scored eighteen or more points in two of seven games. Yeah, I know. One one was last week, and they. Like the offense, they looked good. Mac Jones had a very strong game, 25 of 30, 270 passing yards, two touchdowns. Like they looked good. But that's to for the for them to be fixed after six weeks of putrid football. Not just bad, putrid football. We we will we will see. They did play in week two, and Miami won by a touchdown. Mostert had a big game against them. Tyreek uh, scored. Doesn't generally have huge yardage games against them. So that's something to keep in mind. Mac Jones had the best week he's had last week for this team. You saw Demario uh, Davis get involved. and um, Douglas. Yeah, you know what? I was about to correct it, and I was like, wait. Neither, no, of, you said it, neither of you said anything, so I was like. Because then I, w- I went immediately to was like, wait, is that? Davis. Yeah, who's this? Yeah, yeah. Who's that guy? A Saints linebacker. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah, that's what. I, that's <laughs> why it's Santa so familiar. Ramondre, Ezekiel Elliott, both players uh, were pretty good last week. They're both in play. Yeah. Zeke, yeah. Zeke was. Uh, he's been top twenty-four two weeks in a row, and then Ramondre six six targets the last two weeks. Where are your question marks in this game, Mike? Big. Are question, you staying in the flames with Kendrick Bourne? That's my biggest question mark. Is what is the health of the rest of the wide receivers? Because if Kendrick Bourne is going to get starter snaps, which he has for three straight weeks. Then I will play Kendrick Bourne, is, but but I don't like I I don't have full confidence that they're just going to be like okay you're back to fifty percent of the snaps because they the Patriots have done this to him over and over and over. It's coincided with Juju Smith Schuster's exactly. concussion, and I'm looking at the New England Patriots injury report. Juju is not on it, 
Um, so I, I don't, I don't, I just don't see any information. So I assume he's practicing in full. So I just it, don't know if the three for six that he was bringing to the table or the one for 14 or the one for five. Oh, it's I, a matter of snaps. No, I know, but the snaps were going down for him. So they were dropping. They're, they're getting different players involved. It's kind of, uh, it's like what happened in New York with the Giants. Like the Giants have right. a plethora of receivers and all of a sudden we're like, oh, it's more Wandale. It's more Slayton now. And, and, and Juju was getting to 50% or less snaps the last two weeks anyway. So, you know, and, and his games correlated with Douglas being hurt over a couple of them. So I'm just speculating here, but I, if I'm new England, I'm looking at not Juju as a primary target in this offense. Yeah. It's so it will be, it's, it's a sketchier start for Kendrick Bourne, but I believe that if he's a starter and gets the snaps, he will be, he'll be solid for like a, a flex play at least for fantasy i and and even though the matchup is pretty good you you know you you have people needing to score against the dolphins it looks like juju is back he's been removed from the practice report i'm not going to start douglas Bourne, or juju um i'm gonna just wait a week i'm gonna wait a week see how it, it plays out i don't think i'm going to miss out on something so incredible by not starting one of those guys ramsey and howard should be back too yeah, so it, the the matchup might not be as good as it looks on paper, and yeah, no thank if you. If Tyreek missed the game, you probably, I mean, according to the line and according to what this offense has done, there should be another wideout that you can dance with, whether it's likely Braxton Berrios or Cedric Wilson. Like, no team in the NFL throws the ball to the tight end less than Miami. They've had no tight end relevance but Braxton Berrios, you know, he, he's been on the field a little bit. Cedric Wilson's had a few big plays. Would you dance with either of those? I think or is that without, DFS country? I think, I think that's yeah. more DFS country. Without bye weeks this week, there are better options out there. Jets, oh, yeah. Giants, 36-and-a-half point over under. The game is in New York, of course. But and who's the, home? But the, uh, the Giants are home, and the Jets are favored. So – you know, the Giants defense has been really good in the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I think I'd take the under on a 36-and-a-half point game here. Oh, Ooh. gross. I mean, oh, I, I'm going to go out. I'm going to say 17-14. Okay. Who? Jets. Okay. <laughs> Make a little, making a note. Making but, a note. but let's not make this game very complicated. Both of the – I mean, the Giants' offensive line, it's been problematic – uh, no contact clear for Daniel Jones. It could be Tyrod again. You know, Saquon? Yeah, Saquon's a great play. play. Yeah. Uh, Waller? Obviously. Yeah, the matchup is good. The Jets have not been good against tight ends. Was Waller – there was – He was uh, big last week. Uh, yeah, he's been – he's actually been very good the last couple weeks, but I thought I saw something about his practice report. Questionable with a hamstring. Yeah, okay. So if if That's it's been the, all year. if it's the same thing, then yeah, I'm still going to play Darren Waller. You Great, know, it's a good matchup. I've been so impressed every week with the limited amount of Jalen Hyatt we've seen. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean you play him. And then Wandale showed that he, the floor exists. I mean, he had yeah, a, yeah, that was really bizarre. We all had him in DFS. He was eight for eight the week before, or I'm sorry, eight targets, eight receptions for 62 yards the week before. And then last week, two targets, one catch. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like right now Tyrod Taylor's going to still be the quarterback. It's a little early in the week to know for sure, but uh, Daniel Jones still not cleared for contact as of today. So right now, it's th this matchup, like you said, this this is pretty straightforward. You got Saquon and Waller as good starts, and I'm checking out on the rest, including Wandale in a matchup against the Jets who give up nothing to wide receivers. Yeah, that's fair. And then on the other side, it's Brees Hall is in, obviously. And the question is, you could start Garrett Wilson depending on who all your options are. I think Garrett Wilson's a lock, a lineup lock every week. I, I would never bench Garrett Wilson okay. with the target totals. I mean, he's on pace for 156 targets this year, and, and uh, that's just – I mean, give no, no, me some no. names, that, though. Maybe I'm lying. I want to give you my names because he, he's actually a question in um, – one of my leagues here. So uh, asking for a friend. <laughs> yes, sir. Would you start uh, Garrett Wilson or Michael Pittman? Garrett Wilson. Okay. Garrett Wilson or DJ Moore? Garrett Wilson. Uh, Garrett Wilson or Jordan Addison? Addison. Uh, Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson or Puka? I got to go all the way up. The no, Puka. Right. Okay. Puka, yeah. And I don't blame anybody for the Addison one. The Addison one is a 
you're still got to gamble on the touchdown side. Like Addison is outperforming the touchdown metrics. He's breaking like rookie records for touchdowns. I don't think he's scoring 15, 16, 17 times this year. Um, when he hasn't gotten into the end zone, he doesn't have the targets that Garrett Wilson has. He but maybe he will. He had 10 last week. Okay. That was his first, probably the highest target game of the year, right? Uh, he had nine in the game Jefferson went down. Okay. It, yeah. yeah. It was It was. I mean, weird look, look uh, that's fine. That's fine. If you want to go that direction, yeah. the touchdown odds are much more in his favor. Last three weeks for Wilson, 14, 7, and 12 on targets, but the performances aren't near Addison. So, yeah, maybe I stay in the flames with Cousins there. I'll flip that one. So, Puka okay. and Addison, I would play. I'm guessing both those guys are in your lineup over Wilson. They are. Uh, is Pittman in your lineup over Wilson? Right now, Pittman. Uh, right now, I had Pittman and DJ Moore in ahead. DJ Moore's quarterback situation isn't great, but the matchup is wonderful against Chargers. Pittman is the big question to me of of whether I go Pittman or Garrett Wilson. Philadelphia, or I'm sorry, Jacksonville and Pittsburgh. Jacksonville's five and two. Here we are. They're having a season. Pittsburgh's four and two. What? <laughs> You said it on the show a couple of weeks. You're like, you did it again, Tomlin. <laughs> you and they were so -and -so. Look, they were the up, almost upset last week. They took care of it. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Jacksonville minus two and a half. Over under is forty two. It's in Pittsburgh. Uh, the line is too close for me to you know just say Pittsburgh is going to win it. But I think Pittsburgh is going to win this game. I don't understand how the Steelers can be so abysmal against the wide receiver position and keep winning ball games. I mean, they give up. 36 and a half fantasy points to wide receivers. It's been unbelievable. Like they can't stop them. So that puts like Kirk Ridley should both be played this week. Mm -hmm. But yet, you know, this is a low over under and, and I don't know how they do that magic, but they just win ball games. George Pickens is on pace for 1400 receiving yards this year. He looks physically impossible to stop in one-on-one -on -one situations. And uh, he'd do himself a favor not to get taunting penalties after every nice play he does. <laughs> it was it was really, really nice to see him with eight targets this last week. There was a lot of fear in me for what's going to happen when Deontay Johnson comes back into the lineup. Deontay Johnson was back, played 66% of the snaps, had six targets. So it does it does look like, you know, the, the number one target is Pickens has retained that, at least as of now. Najee Harris and Jalen Warren both scored, I believe, last week. Did Warren score? I'm I pretty know sure Warren scored. Najee I, scored. I saw the Warren play. I'll double check. Unless I am it, uh, uh, yep, hallucinating. Both did. Okay. Yeah, both both scored. Uh, I, it was only eight opportunities, though, for Jalen Warren. Which is the equal. It's equal in value <laughs> yeah. to 17 opportunities just, for Najee just Harris. Just saying, it was a uh, – I think it was like a mostly positive game script there for the Steelers. Yes. And – that was the lowest opportunities that Warren has seen all year. Uh, what's your confidence level in Harris? Uh, still, Jaguars still defense been good against runners. It's yeah, it's still not high. Yeah, Jacksonville shuts down the run. Jacksonville is susceptible to running backs in the passing game, um, which is the Warren exactly. So I'm I'm very not confident in Najee Harris in this matchup. If he's more to the ground and pound guy against a very difficult line to ground and pound against you're what are you talking 3.2 a carry how many opportunities yeah. is he going to need and I think part of why you said you know you saw oh it was a real positive game script last week and that was Jalen Warren's fewest touches is because the 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 four minute drill type running back the the keep the lead slow the game down that's Najee so if you think that the Jacksonville Jaguars can keep up can be in the lead then Jalen Warren projects to be just as good an option as Najee this week, which to me is both poor options. Deontay Johnson was 5 for 79 last week. Back into top 24. Yeah, we're back. Pittman or Deontay? Oh, Pittman. I'm going to go Pittman. Okay. It's it, not by a huge I'll vote of confidence. I'll take Deontay. You'll just take the targets? Yeah, I will. But uh, on the other side, just throwing it out there, Jacksonville, third highest in targeting the tight end position this year. Evan Ingram, seven-plus oh, targets in six straight games. Good old Schmevin. Nothing like consistent <laughs> Evan Ingram. Guys, I've been saying it forever. Yeah. If there's anything he is, it's consistent. Oh, man. It reminds me of, like, you know how um, 
you know, like kids, they sow their wild oats and then they, you know, have to like settle down. Yeah, eventually you grow up. I feel like Evan Ingram like had that period of his life, like his wild teenage yeah. years. Yeah, because he got he got the bag. And now he's like, I've got my steady job and I work a nine to five <laughs> and I come home to the wife and kids and watch TV. I'm yeah. going to really put myself into this now. I mean, it's Gets funny. Gets his shoe shine. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he's, he's a businessman. Businessman. Yeah, well, we said they're businessmen. Uh, I did one quick, like, Kirk, absolutely – Calvin Ridley, the matchup is there. The, yes, you I, start yeah, you, I start I'm not him. ready to give up on Ridley. I, I'm there with you guys. Uh, and just a note, because he didn't practice again, but if your team, like, as you're looking towards the future, I think that Zay Jones is probably on a waiver wire. And if I had a spot, I would put Zay Jones on it. The six and one Philadelphia Eagles take on the Washington Commanders, sitting at three and four. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Philadelphia minus six and a half. The over under is forty three and a half. Philadelphia beat them in overtime, divisional game, week four, thirty four thirty one. It was a good one, mm -hmm. and it was a good game for Sam Howell in that one. Now they're at home, which I mean, look the way Washington Washington's been turning everything on its head all year long. From Brian Robinson starting the year on fire to Dotson's disappearance to Logan Thomas being suddenly relevant instead of Dotson to Sam Howell having good games when he should have bad games and bad games when he should have good games. I don't want, I don't want to play Washington Commanders this week. No, I, I don't blame you. Um, the trade with the Titans to get an All Star safety is an all you know that's that's going to help this defense. That's going to hurt Sam Howell from what we saw. Uh, in week four uh, so the the defensive line has looked great all year for the Eagles this I I'm not with the Dolphins and with the Eagles I'm not judging their uh, points given up in the secondary quite the same this week as what we've seen prior because I do think that getting that pieces back getting pieces back will will change the equation so I mean Brian Robinson's a floor play you're just crossing your fingers for a rushing touchdown. Because the Eagles defense is just that I mean it, it's the worst matchup for running back. Their defensive line is so good. Yeah, it's unstoppable. It, and it just doesn't match up with it's like what you said with Najee in the ground and pound. That's Brian Robinson's MO. So I don't expect success there. Brian Robinson last time in week four against this team had twelve fantasy points, which you would be happy with, but he did fall into the end zone. If you take those six points right. out, it was bad. And if you look at his other games, uh, the game before it, seven total points. The game after it, six total points. The game after it, 12, okay, and then eight, 8.3. So, I mean, he really hasn't. And, and the two the two games in that whole stretch where he has 12 points, both of those games, he six of those came from a touchdown. So, dude, he had eight points against the Giants, and he scored. That's that's some good work. Like, <laughs> that's that's incredibly uh, yeah, inefficient. I, I don't I don't want to play Brian Robinson this week. I'm I'm and yet he is the running back ten on the season. Yeah, well, he started the year with <laughs> yeah. some monstrous games, but I I think you know if you're talking about um, Darnell Anderson, aka Daryl Henderson, or Brian Robinson, I'm I'm going Henderson. Gotcha. Hertz, Swift, AJ Brown, and Goddard are locks. Devontae Smith has been struggling. I feel like Jason is single-handedly trying to muster a good game from Devontae Smith. It's this been is the week. It's been rough. This is the week. The uh, yeah, you, the Washington you, Manders on the I season know. are giving up the most fantasy points to wide receivers. I thought it was the week for him earlier. Well, he got <laughs> injured. No, he got – Remember the start of the week earlier? He wasn't. He was going to be, but then he, he – Oh, you pivoted him? I pivoted oh. on him because of the injuries. So you didn't lose that power, the start uh, of the week power. Correct. Not I, that that's what you're going to do in a no, minute. No, I'm holding. He was 7 for 78 in week four against Washington. Yeah. And so this is the week, Jay. This is the week. You heard it here. Yeah. Make call, a note. Calling it. So a touchdown guarantee? Mm -hmm. I mean, you wouldn't, yeah. be you wouldn't be happy with Whoa, that touchdown. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you touchdown guarantee. Man. It wouldn't be the week if he didn't score. You got fired up right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had to think about it, and I, it just dawned on me, whoa, he's getting a touchdown this week for sure. I love it. All right. <laughs> Let's uh, move on. Welcome to Starts of the Week, presented by Purina Pro Plan. 
You know what? I think we should start at the wide receiver position. Oh, okay. And why don't you kick it off, Jay? I'll kick it off. Devonta Smith. Devonte Smith uh, at Washington. It has obviously been rough four of his last five games. He's had fewer than seven fantasy points. I get the desire to say, should I pivot? Should I bench him? But this is the get right week. First off, we already know he gets a touchdown this week. That's a guarantee. But Washington's secondary, they are a print fest for opposing passing games. They're 29th in schedule adjusted fantasy points to wide receivers. They're 29th in yards per attempt. And his last three games against the Commanders, Mike, you brought up the 7 for 78 earlier this year. Yep. That was on nine targets. He had six uh, target, uh, six receptions at a touchdown last year in Week 10. And in Week 3 last year, eight for 166 and a touchdown. Okay. So he has he has destroyed the Commanders. It's a great matchup for him. Um, he's my start of the week. My wide receiver start of the week is rookie Zay Flowers taking on the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, the Ravens uh, are set up to slaughter the Cardinals. Yeah. It's a much more aggressive bird, the Ravens. Oh, in a bird fight? Uh, oh, in my a bird money fight. Is, yeah. is on the we are Welcome to the bird <laughs> yeah. podcast yet yeah. again. I mean, like, Ravens, I believe they protect, like, the London Tower. Hmm. So, I mean, these are mean birds. I mean, you could have just made that up, and oh, I would have been yeah. like, yeah. Ravens sound, come rapping like at the, the door. That tower needs uh, they do that too. protecting. Flowers has a 27% target share, consistent floor every week, part of the offensive design, and um, the Cardinals are 27th against wideouts. And I'm going to go Christian Kirk against the Pittsburgh Steelers since the week one dud which was so bizarre because that matched everything that they said they were or that they were showing us that Kirk is only the slot guy. I'm sure that Zay Jones injury has factored in, but Kirk is the guy. It has not been Calvin Ridley. It's been Christian Kirk <clears throat> averaging nearly nine targets and nearly 80 yards per game since week one. Wide receiver 10 in that time span. And the Steelers dead last in schedule adjusted fantasy points to the wide receiver. Uh, Christian Kirk is a must start. And and speaking of the Zay Jones injury, he didn't participate in practice Wednesday. We brought that up, but they have a bye week next week. So I I think it's heal up Zay Jones and I go would, bananas. And Christian that's, Kirk. that's why I'm saying like pick pick Zay Jones up just in case. Yeah, uh, at quarterback I have Dak Prescott against the Los Angeles Rams. He is at home. Mike, you mentioned him as your second half sleeper because of the schedule that is coming up for him and the Cowboys have a 25.8 team implied total as six point home favorites that comes by scoring touchdowns over the last month the Rams are 28th and schedule adjusted fantasy points to quarterbacks uh Dak should have his healthiest offensive line that he you know he's been struggling with that this year they're coming off of the bye the Rams rank 29th and adjusted sack rate this this should be a get right game for Dak coming off of a quarterback one performance I'm gonna go with my the same player I put as my quarterback streamer of the week, C.J. Stroud against the right. Carolina Panthers. Uh, been so impressed with Stroud. Gets one of his weapons back. Let's not forget, like when we say, yes. oh, he slowed down yep. a little bit. Well, part of it was like Tank Dell's not there to help him, and he's back. Carolina's 27th in fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. Uh, he has been picking people apart, and I think that you're going to have a pretty fun game between Carolina and Houston. I'm going Jared Garf. Jared? Really? Jared. Jared Garf, Monday night action against the Las Vegas Raiders. Hey, announcing. We Sir. Have, we have a, a 27 implied points for the Detroit Lions. Eight and a half point home favorite, at least the last time I had looked. Still, no, still not expecting David Montgomery. That should be more passing, more passing touchdowns. And since the beginning of the 2022 season, Goff is averaging over 27 fantasy points per game when he is at home. And the Raiders allowing a, Jason, very nice 69% completion oh, rate. very nice. All right, I'm going at the running back position with Kareem Hunt. He is on the road in Seattle uh, with Jerome Ford out. Hunt is going to be a really solid week. Uh, he's he's a really really good player. He's been surprising. Like when you watch it, he's he's got the juice. I worried when he wasn't signing anywhere this off season that maybe he just has lost a step and doesn't have it. But he looks well. Uh, he's been a top twelve running back each of the last two weeks on just thirty one percent of the snaps, and he should see fifteen plus touches in this game against Seattle. Running backs this year who see 15 plus touches average 14.7 uh, fantasy points per game. 
You ever, you, you know, look at your team in the league of record and just say, sometimes it just doesn't go your way. I, <laughs> yeah. I, um, my opponent this week is like that injury, the injury storylines all bend towards his roster. It's like Kareem Hunt's on the roster. I wouldn't have been afraid of Kareem Hunt. Now I'm afraid of Kareem Hunt. Dalton Kincaid's on his roster. I wouldn't have been afraid of Dalton Kincaid. Now I'm afraid of Dalton Kincaid. Yeah. Uh, gets Tank Dale back. Um, sometimes it just goes that way. He's siphoned my luck. <laughs> he siphoned yeah, he your did. health. Uh, we're at running back, right? Yeah. You just went Kareem Hunt. I went Gus Edwards against beep, beep. Arizona. It's time to hop on board. Do we have that? The Gus bus. Well, apparently two oh, people had it. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's... Give, me a, give me a clean one because that was terrible. Beep, beep. There He's the preferred running back over Justice Hill. When Baltimore gets inside the red zone, it's even juicier, and they will. He's seen a touch on 40% what? of his snaps. So when he's out there, they use him, the Cardinals. I mean, it, it's kind of funny. They are also 27th against running backs. All three of my starts, the opponent is 27th against that position. We and, see what uh, you target. I think it's going to be a very big week for Gus Edwards. Yep, at the tight end. Excuse me. Oh, you've got one? Yeah, I have a running back. I mean, we can bypass it. I yeah, guess. Probably, probably soon. It's, uh, I want to give some confidence to still starting Chuba Hubbard against the Houston Texans. I know that Miles Sanders is back, but Chuba over the over the season has been the better running back. Frank Reich came out and he talked about if we're going to look at a committee approach. Then you know the quote: Chuba's been uh, doing pretty well. And again, it's more rotation and more play by play. This is not a coach saying as soon as Miles Sanders is back with his big old contract and big bag of money, he's the starting running back. This is appropriately we're going to go with the hot hand, and I think that Chuba can still have it. It's the Texans, one of the worst run defenses in the NFL. 25th schedule adjusted points and 31st in PFF's rush defense and tackling grades. I'm still play, I'm still willing to play Chuba. Okie dokie. At tight end position, um, I'm going with Taysom Hill in that Colts game. I, I like targeting Colts games. As of right now, as of this recording, Juwan Johnson is not practicing in full. And you can no longer – I mean, well, here's the craziest thing about Taysom Hill as a tight end start of the week. He's playing tight end. He's actually, he like, is, yeah. for the first time in his 70-year career, is actually playing tight end. Last week, he ran 42 routes. That was the second most at the tight end position in the NFL. He is also still a goal line running back. So if you get a tight end plus a goal line running back, last week, five rushes, 18 yards and a score. Over the last two weeks, 13 targets, 11 receptions, 99 yards, and this game could go bonkers um you know the the Colts are allowing 27.3 points per game 30th in the NFL so why didn't you bid more than three fab on him I didn't have much fab and I liked Ferguson quite a bit this week this week and so I thought I would take the cheaper option between two worthy starts of the week all right I'm going with nice goo goo ka -choo. I just want to highlight that this is the tight end five on the year. This is Mike's my guy that had a rough start. You know, yeah, it was not wasn't looking good. Seven for ninety eight and one last week on eight targets. If you want to an answer the question of what happened to Wandale, there you, there's part of your he answer. Got eaten by a walrus. <laughs> he got eaten. Which look, I don't know how many humans walruses eat on a regular basis. But at just, least one, just a few. <laughs> just one. This is the oh, yeah. this is the oh, wide receiver my. one. So Mike, close us up. Uh, I'm going with Jake Ferguson, the guy that Jason just talked about, Mr. Fergalicious. It's still the second best matchup for the tight end position. That includes a dud against the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's one of the higher over unders of the week. He's still averaging five targets per game, and his home team, everything. I mean, six point home favorites, twenty five point team implied total, and I think that Fergalicious is still in play as a tight end streamer. Thanks again to our sponsor, Purina Pro Plan Sport. Pro Plan Sport provides a fine-tuned nutrition for strength and stamina that enables dogs and owners to take on life's adventures together. Pro Plan Sport, high-performance fuel for active dogs. It all starts here. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Last week on the Boom Boom Kicker. <laughs>
I went full Mark McGuire, tricked by a poisoned baked potato skin. <clears throat> I rose up in great fury, pleaded my case before a grand jury. Kickers should be exiled and done. Foiled by his Rico Suave looks, this judge was no Brooks, hoodwinked by the Lions' Riley Patterson. Did I catch a Rico Suave reference in there? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, and to be clear, going full Mark McGuire uh, was just having a red face. That's right. I went mm. full Bruce uh, Arians as well. Uh, okay. Rico. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. Finish it. Uh, 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 uh. Suave. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that's well, the, the end. The 90s were weird. I think man. that's the end of our podcast. Um, <laughs> check out DFSPass.com if you want to play some DFS this weekend. Enjoy the ball game tonight. We'll be back with more matchups in the Fantasy Faceoff, a.k.a. Mike's Shame coming yes. tomorrow. Did you see uh, – we, 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 we should have been alerted way earlier in the season, but speaking of the DFS pass, that the week one Millie Maker winner – Yes. Uh, they, they reached out right after their win. They were a DFS pass user. They're like, oh, I just got the DFS pass this week. I won the Millie Maker. And, and, they, and they, to be clear, winning the Millie Maker, he won a million dollars. Yeah. Crazy. Which is not all. I mean, look, there's yeah, lots a lot of, of ties. Times you, yeah. you, you split it, but uh, congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, to us, <laughs> no, you 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 crushed it. Good job, but amazing yeah, job. Yeah, so check out the DFS pass. That's just at cool. DFSPass.com. All right, that'll do it for today's episode of the podcast. We'll catch you tomorrow, all you mallards out there. See you later. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.